I'm gonna change this, which is a liquid metal from Conductinaut, I should say from Thermal Grizzly, the Bauer, in my laptop, which is, uh, which is the Asus G16. Check the link up here, I already did this. There we go. The heatsink with the liquid metal. But today we're gonna change out that liquid metal application to something that I hope it's more than just snake oil devour because it was a lot of money. Expensive! Cryo sheet, yes. The new revolutionary stuff that comes in a very small package like this. So this is the graphene pad right here itself. Uh, 0.2 millimeters in uh, thickness. So this is the best I could get it there on the CPU side. It's okay, just a very tiny little bit of overhang there, but it doesn't really come into contact with anything. That's because the tape is there. And it's something of a PTM sort of thing. So it's a thermal compound that goes on your CPU, GPU, whatever, with uh, a lot less of the side effects, or I should say a lot less of the negative side effects when using liquid metal application. Come on. But first, a good idea, I think it's a blind test. So I'm gonna run this computer a little bit uh, before and after. I won't tell you exactly which footage is which and let you guys be the judge of what's happening and which is liquid metal and which is, you know, the Thermal Grizzly cryo sheet right here. Because, well, in the end, it all comes down to, well, I think the sound. So that's uh, how much the fans ramp up and the temperatures go up and your performance overall and if you find stability that pleases both your ears and your performance then uh, i would say that's a win situation regardless if you're using liquid metal or cryo sheet or anything else in between so anyway without further ado let's just jump into the video open up that laptop and swap out that liquid metal for this and see exactly what's happening along the way so this is my liquid metal job uh, yeah, not as good as the factory, obviously, but it really did okay, considering that I'm doing it at home, and uh, yeah, well, I hate liquid metal, guys. I, I really hate liquid metal. This is the heatsink side of it as well, as you can see, obviously pulling up in that corner right there, and pulling up, obviously, in the same corner here. Yeah, I'll have to clean up the GPU paste here and repaste all of these VRMs both on the heatsink side and also on this uh, motherboard side here. But let's just uh, clean up this liquid metal before we start reapplying the PTM. Oh, I am gonna have to put some thermal putty in there as well because uh, I took it up a bunch of times and I never did bother to replace this. This is also expensive, but definitely it is needed because well, it's crusty and gone. So uh, yeah, we'll be doing this along the way as well. But here's my problem. Liquid metal is actually a pain to work with. It's messy, it's electrically conductive, and if it spreads onto your motherboard, you can easily short it out, and it also curls aluminum, and it has this annoying tendency to shift or oxidize well over time. Asus did a absolutely fantastic, solid job that I wasn't really expecting, applying it from the factory, but when I redid the swap myself, I was actually reminded why I don't love it. If anything, I actually hate it now. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't forget to subscribe. You know, it helps out with the algorithm if you also comment down below. You can just drop a letter, I don't know, whatever you feel like. You're awesome, smart guys. Let's just continue. All right, so this is the heating side after we are done with the peat, with the um, liquid metal here. And yeah, obviously, well, you know, marks there as well from the liquid metal. And this is the CPU side. And as you can see, more, you know, um, signs of liquid metal right there. That's where I hope that the magic of this uh, cryo sheet comes into place. This is actually a graphene PTM that's also thermally conductive, uh, electrically conductive, I should say. Uh, obviously thermally conductive as well. And the only reason I'm using it is because this surface was prepped in beforehand by the factory for liquid metal application. So it should be more than okay with this graphene application. So this is what you get in the package. The thermal grizzly, this is the, well, PTM itself. So this is the graphene pad right here itself, uh, 0.2 millimeters in uh, thickness. Yeah, you get this. This is the TG small silicon oil syringe used to mount this. So just a bit of a, one small drop here. 
should be enough to hold it in place uh, before you mount everything back up together. Get some tape. So this is uh, in case you want to put some tape around. I don't have to do that for the CPU, but if I wanted to do this for the GPU, definitely I'll have to use some of this tape because this is uh, electrically conductive. So that's the reason for that. Now, spec wise. Yeah, compared to liquid metal, this cryo sheet doesn't really publish an exact conductivity number. Thermal Grizzly just calls it outstanding and says that it's basically way better than their carbon knot pads. On paper anyway, conductor knot still wins, no doubt about it. When I stress tested at 80 watts, well, with liquid metal, the CPU climbed to about 94 degrees C and just sat there. But the clocks, there was something wrong here. They just hovered at around 3400 megahertz or so. Uh, <laughs> after swapping to cryo sheet, well, the temperatures were basically identical, which is still a win in it. So maybe even half a degree cooler. I might be wrong. But anyway, the big difference was definitely in performance. Now the CPU holds a steady 4000 megahertz at the same 80 watts more or less same fan speed same noise and you know just more power so uh yeah that's definitely a performance uplift in there and i'm really happy about it but here's the real kicker gaming yes with liquid metal playing fortnite this would pin the cpu between 90 and 95 degrees c almost constantly but after moving to cryo sheet the max that i've seen it's around 80 to 85 <laughs> That's a solid 10 degree drop in real world gaming with no extra fan noise. Now, to be fair, I also did something else in there while I was there. You know, I also redid the thermal putty on the VRMs and maybe that helped stability a bit. But the main change was uh, the swap to cryo sheet and the difference, at least in my case, speaks for itself. So is the cryo sheet better than liquid metal? Well, on paper, no. Conductonaut still has a higher thermal conductivity, but in practice, CryoSheet gave me a lower gaming temp, higher sustained clocks, and way more peace of mind. So, win, 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 in my case, and for my mind. And if you really want to see me suffer, just check out my liquid metal application video somewhere up here. It's basically me fighting with Conductonaut, stressing about short circuits, and wondering why I even started up uh, doing this in the first place. Go watch that if you want the full liquid metal horror show for yourself and learn from my experience because uh, I tend to learn things by doing them myself, even though I mess up sometimes. This right here is the place where you meet the truth because I buy everything that I present here with my own money. So none of those ridiculous NDAs where I don't get to say what I want because like this, I'm free from all of that and I can tell you exactly what's happening. If you want to see me do a review of something specific on your mind, don't forget to drop it down in the comment. Maybe I'll just get around to it. And until the next one, guys, remember, stay awesome and see you guys around. So uh, this is using my old mouse and I need a lot of input to move it as much as I do. This is not very scientific, I know. And this is just me moving it very slightly with the other one. And it just moves a whole lot faster around the screen.